Welcome back to episode 40 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy, and uh, I just cast Quarantine Field for one. I exiled myself with one isolation counter, and I'll return to the battlefield when coronavirus leaves. That's very appropriate. Of you. I know. I was so excited about that one. And I'm your co-host, Mike Coyle, and I was trying to think of a good intro this week, but all I could think about is blue-green dual lands. I wanted something topical, not tropical. <laughs> Please listen carefully bad and we're recording from home this week and this sure. is a podcast where we talk about all things magic the gathering we're mostly commander just a quick note if you're looking for a way to support the podcast and um you know you want to you know leave a comment or a like or uh just just any feedback you can on the podcast itself we'd really appreciate it um, also, if you're looking to pick up any singles or sealed product, we do have a TCG player affiliate link on our website. Please check it out if you are going to make purchases from TCG player. Uh, we also launched our Patreon a few weeks ago. Uh, thank you for those um, that have signed up to support us. Uh, you can over to, head over to patreon.com slash guardian project pod uh, and support for as little as a dollar a month. We've got some fun rewards. Um, so we appreciate all of your feedback and uh, your support. So if you want to donate, we'll take your money. <laughs> <laughs> and like we said, we're recording from home. So the audio might sound a little different today. Um, we're recording through, we're actually messaging or I guess having a call through discord. Um, so We'll probably be doing this for a few weeks while we all hang out at home and go stir crazy. Amen to that. Amen to that. Coil is holding coffee. I thought it was beer. Well, it wasn't beer. It was water. You know. Coffee's our routine. I have to keep the routine. It's what the doctors say. Keep the routine when you're in quarantine. <laughs> What's on the agenda this week? Today, we're going to talk about Secret Lair Ultimate Edition featuring... Do, 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 fetch lands. We've got signature spell book Chandra. Uh, we're going to talk about how uh, the coronavirus is affecting competitive magic. Um, Morrow released a bunch of spoilers since the Ikoria set spoilers actually got delayed. So he did a bunch of uh, little tidbits and stuff we can look forward to. We're going to talk about that. Um, one big thing a lot of people are doing nowadays is streaming paper magic now that we're all stuck in our own homes. Uh, we got a pack one, pick one. We're going to open a pack of Magic Origins. And I'm going to be doing Commander of the Week this week featuring Cranko, Tin Street Kingpin. Yeah, so um, we're going to talk about some... Want to talk about some fetch lands that everybody's excited about? Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the non-foil fetch lands that they're printing. I don't even care if they're foil or not. So uh, Secret Lair Ultimate Edition is making fetch happen, which is... Like, literally my favorite joke of, like, all time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it says, and, and it's happening at your LGS. Um, so uh, it's featuring five five different arts from a lot of uh, premier artists. Um, we have the Enemy Fetchlands, uh, Marsh Flats, Scalding Tarn, Verdant Catacombs, Arid Mesa, and Misty Rainforest. Um, and each of them have a different artwork featuring a different plane. So Lorwyn is... Uh, or I guess Marsh Flats is is uh, a lo an art for Lorwyn. Uh, Scalding mm -hmm. Tarn is Dominaria. Verdant Catacombs is Innistrad. Arid Mesa is Amonkhet, and Misty Rainforest is Ixalan. And yeah. um, it says when you purchase those, uh, they come in a commemorative box to dis to display them. If you're going to just display them and not play with them. Um, <laughs> That's a thing, I That's guess. Thing. Um, <clears throat> and but it continues to say that uh, it's it, they're non-foil. So for those of you like Coil who are excited for non-foil cards, uh, there you go. Uh, starting on May 29th, uh, they're going to be sold at your local game store. Uh, they're limited to ten copies per store. Yeah, not a lot. Nope, not very many. Um, so it says make sure to check in with your local store soon in that <clears throat> while the vast majority of these will go out through WPN stores, there will be another opportunity to pick these up. Uh, it says the week after these go on sale, they'll be running a secret layer super drop kind of like they did in December where they had a bunch of secret layers that you could buy. And it says they'll show, share more details about the drops closer to June. But one detail that they will share is that um, <clears throat> if you purchase the bundle that combines each drop um, during that super drop, 
you will receive a one random fetch land for each bundle you purchase. So yeah. um, they said Secret Lair has been a fantastic success and players are learning to love the drops that appeal to them. Um, and they're hoping to expand this to other venues uh, as they evolve an exciting way to deliver new twists on old favorites. Yeah, everyone was screaming about the fetch land reprints. They really needed, they wanted them, needed them in order to get the prices down. And this ain't gonna get the price down, but they're gonna it is go. Cool. They're gonna go way up. These these particular ones will. I don't know. I mean, do you think it'll affect um, standard printing uh, fetch lands at all, like the Zendikar or the Modern Masters printings? Um. Well, I guess the Modern Masters weren't standard printings, but oh, oh, just a regular print run, you mean? Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Every single time these are printed, the price of the others just goes up. So okay, I. But this one's a lot different, so yeah. prob- probably not. But um, I assume we're going to see the Ally Fetch Lands reprinted again this year. <laughs> yeah, it's a speaking of old favorites. This isn't the last time we'll see them this year either. So while they will not be entering standard in 2020, it says let's put that rumor to rest. They did not like the shuffling and the time that that was added to playing. Um, there will be another way to pick up some stylized ver- passage. I mean, that's only one though. They they print Evolving Wilds a lot as well. That's true. No one plays it, though. <laughs> no one plays it, though. And it says uh, there will be another way to pick some of these stylized versions of fetches up this year, uh, also at your local game store. So I assume the identical drop for the other five. Um, Most likely. And then it says, uh, why are they making fetch happen again in 2020? Um, they said it's because it's the year of Commander. And many players enjoy these special lands and multicolored decks. And players need these for modern, and they haven't printed new versions since 2017. So consistency is key and fetch lands make that happen. I, I, I like them a lot. Actually, I would buy these. I mean, I, I don't only buy foils. I advocate for foils if they're affordable. These won't be if they were in foil, but they won't be if they're in non foil either, I guess. So th- these don't matter. But the, I think the Misty Rainforest and the Verdant Catacombs are my favorite art by far of these five. Yeah, the Misty, like none of them are bad. I really want to say the Arid Mesa is my favorite, strictly because it's on the Amonkhet plane, but it's not. Misty Rainforest is my favorite one. It's so good. I would say that Misty Rainforest, then the Verdant Catacombs, which is on on uh, Innistrad, it's got Ava- the the Church of Avacyn's like symbol, and then yep. then probably Arid Mesa, Marsh Flats, and then the Scalding Tarn. The Scalding Tarn just. Looks I don't know. Like... I think it seems cool. I mean, it, it's not bad, but it's um... very Zendikar. The, no, Dominaria, the Scalding Tarn. Oh, it looks very Zendikar to me. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> but the Marsh Flats is pretty cool. I just I just really like that Misty Rainforest with that like totem the in oh, there. Yeah. 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 I, I assume, I know that the Misty Rainforest is actually by Seb McKinnon, very popular artist nowadays. Um, had some really good artwork in some of the latest sets. Uh, I know he does a lot of his artwork through his um, his Kickstarters to get them made into playmats and stuff. I assume most of these artists will do something similar and get these made into playmats. So if there's an art you really like, look for it in playmat form. Check out these uh, artist Patreons if they have them or Kickstarters and uh, support them. Yeah. If this Misty Rainforest is made into a playmat, I'll get it. I like my Ixalan map playmat a lot. And this is very similar to that. And I already have a Seb McKinnon playmat when he did his last um, <clears throat> his last Kickstarter. I did I got the Deliver Unto Evil, which was his mm. artwork. So mm. so fetches are happening. Also, we're getting another signature spellbook for Chandra. So for yeah. players who use um, a lot of probably signature red cards, I assume many of these will be. A lot of the cards are are commander playable from the oh, yeah. from the signature spellbooks. Uh, it says they uh, the Chandra spellbook. Um, we'll have eight cards and two of them that were already previewed was Chandra Torch of Defiance, probably one of the best Chandras. And, and if not the best, yeah. If not the best. And Past in Flames, which is 100% played in Modern and in Commander. It's really good in both. Yeah, and actually Chandra Torch of Defiance sees play in Pioneer. Wonderful. Uh, and, and Historic, if people play that in paper. Not sure. I don't think that's a thing. I wonder I mean, how. I wonder what'd you say. It's on Arena, and, and I'm assuming these card arts will be made available in Arena as well. I know it's not the physical form of the spellbook, but 
I don't know. I wonder if these will be. I know that they, they give you the arena. Oh, well. Oh, the artwork. Not not like a sleeve. No, I guess they could be as like a special giveaway. Awesome. I mean, take my money. I always do that with, with all the special things. So who knows? Do you, do you think, do you know, like, can you guess any other of the cards that might be printed in this with Chandra? I hope Blasphemous Act. You think so? With Chandra? I mean, you could argue it. She explodes things. I I say Chandra's ignition. I don't know if they'll go remix to ignition. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know, but if they did, I play that in Zinder Split and Oaken coin flips. So I 100% would welcome that. Uh, Maybe, well, it says eight premium, eight cards plus one premium foil version of the eight cards as a way to show their love for Chandra, stylize their commander deck. Um, it just says a collection of eight powerful spells featuring Chandra. So it right. could just be, it, I mean, it, it doesn't, they don't have to just be Chandra cards. I mean, rest in peace was redone with Gideon on it. I mean, granted right. he did. And, 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 and pass in flames is here too. And that's not typically a Chandra card. Right. So I'd be all about getting a blasphemous act um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt they would put like a faithless looting in here. Mm, it's possible. They're not all winners. Faithless looter was oh. a faithless looter. Faithless looting faithless was was winner. a winning until they they a winner until they got rid of it from modern. Yeah. People were sad. Maybe they'll reprint uh, Pia and Kian, uh, Kieran Nalar with like holding Chandra as the baby. As as the baby. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so that comes out um, June 26th. So that's in a couple months we'll get that signature spell book. Very cool. Uh, competitive magic. Yeah. Has been, has been affected by the coronavirus. So pretty much, I mean, this news isn't, isn't new. It's new since we last recorded. Um, but as everybody expected, things were getting canceled. I think, yeah, last week when we were recording, um, Magic Fest Detroit was canceled while we were recording. Live. Um, Yeah, live cancellations. So the event said that, um, Channel Fireball will continue to assess Magic Fest on a case-by-case basis. They canceled the players to our finals in Houston, and they're shifting those invites. It says the rescheduling and relocating the upcoming round of regional player tour, players tours events. They're adding an online regionals players tour, uh, canceling the Mythic Invitational that was scheduled in May, and providing travel reimbursements to players um, to qualify players with non-refundable and non-transferable flights to the impacted players tour, players tour finals, mythic invitational events. Um, so obviously we're not qualified, so we're not going to receive emails, but, um, and then they're announcing the cancellation of all magic fests through mid April. Um, yeah. I know that CubeCon was also announced to be delayed, um, which makes me, um, Obviously, it's sad, but I'm glad that it was it was delayed because I wouldn't have traveled out. Obviously, we're, I'm, we're being pretty strict with staying at home, but I would really like to go to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it would be cool. Yeah. So there's there's a full announcement on, on all of these. Um, I I believe we tweeted out actually last week from the page, and if not, um, reach out to us. We can we can share this. It's on Daily MTG, but it's got uh, info on Magic Fests, um, all of all of the other tournaments that they're canceling um, to keep everybody safe and at home. I know there was some talk about potentially trying to um, get the Magic Fest back on later in the year uh, for you know the local communities that did miss out. I know we we missed Magic Fest Detroit we know countless countless events have been canceled so it, it is difficult to schedule a large venue uh, i know it happens for us at uh tcf center formerly kobo hall uh not an easy thing to just kind of rent out on a weekend uh so hopefully they can coordinate something um if not i guess we'll just see them next year yeah um we also had a post on blogatog which we'll talk about this before we do paper streaming um, that Mark Rosewater uh, posted. So the previews don't start until April second. So um, he, which is delayed. Is it delayed? Yeah. So they delayed the teasers. Um, I can find the specific post about it. 
they, they were delaying the teasers because they wanted to um, have everyone to have an opportunity to get into it. I hope I'm not incorrect in my me saying that. Well, well, while well, while you find that, um, yeah. He posted that um, although Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths, uh, previews don't start until April 2nd, uh, he's been getting a lot of requests from people cooped up at home that are eager for content. So um, he posted his column like he used to do a long time ago, and he's giving us a teaser of tiny hints of things that are to come and that he's only giving us partial information. And I remember that this happened for the original Theros only because... Um, I remember reading this about the card Meadow Mai, which was basically time walk, but on a on a creature. It was take another turn if this creature swings. And I think that the teaser was there's a creature that has take another turn. But so he posted a bunch of facts about things that are going to be in the set. So we're going to go through these. Um, it said that there's going to be Magic's seventh egg, a card, a card with text that says four or more times this game. A card with text that says ten, or that says total power ten or less. Uh, Magic's largest power and toughness granting aura is in the set. A, yeah. a card that has text X is the number of times this creature has been mutated, so you can mutate multiple times. So that's kind of cool. Um, Magic third and fourth card with text that says zero is even. Which I know you and I disagree. I like that it's even because no zero one, is not even. No one gets no one it's gets anything. <laughs> uh, three cards with the text, different names. So the card is going to say something about cards with different names. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Twelve different types of counters, and there was an edit, and he said it's actually thirteen because loyalty counters don't pop up when he was doing his review. Um. A card that says, choose a kind of counter at random. We don't have that many kinds of counters right now, so I'm interested to see. We're about to. <laughs> We're about to, because there's 13. Mm -hmm. a, a card with the text, remove eight four shadow counters. Four oh. shadow. Uh, a cycle that players have been asking them to make for over 10 years. I, mm -hmm. I can't even think of the cycle that I, uh, that people talk about. And then... Uh, in addition, they gave us he gave us a few creature types, a dinosaur turtle, a shark beast, a demon kraken, an elemental otter, brushwag, a hellion horror, and a nightmare squirrel. Nightmare squirrel. Nightmare oh, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's unpack some of this. So at La Polani, players are going to be happy about an egg. I assume it's going to be red, white, or green. It has to be. I mean, okay, it would be really weird if it was... And actually, blue egg makes sense. Blue egg could make sense. Black egg doesn't make a ton of sense. But what if it's a rotten egg? It makes sense if it was black. Rot well, then it would be Golgari, probably. But that would still be sad for the Atlapalani players. It's going to be in those colors. They're not going to do that. They'll just have to get a zealous conscript so they can steal it from another player just so that they can actually have <laughs> an egg on their board state. <laughs> right. <laughs> Four or more times this game. I mean, clearly you're looking to do the same thing over and over. That doesn't seem like a card that you'd want in Commander unless it was like if you shuffled your deck four or more times this game. That'd be great. I mean, they do have those Commander Storm cards right now. So it could be like if you've cast your Commander from your Command Zone four or more times this game. I don't know if they'd put that in a standard set, though. Like, cast your commander. Maybe it's if you cast a legendary creature. They could get away with that, then. If you cast a legendary creature four well, or more times this did game. He, did he say these are all from the standard? These can be found in Ikoria Layer of Behemoths. Well, okay, hold on. So it could be in the commander. Well, it says previews for Ikoria Layer of Behemoths, but then it says the following cards can be found in Ikoria. Could be commander. He's being a sneaky trickster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's in one of the special commander cards from that's linked to Ikoria. Every single one of these is in commander, and none of them are applicable to the actual standard. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go catch you. <laughs> um, a card with text "Total Power Ten or Less." Destroy all creatures except ones you choose with total power ten or less. 
you know, choose a number of creatures with total power 10 or less, destroy all other creatures. Exile all other creatures. Yeah, make it black so I can put it in Shire, please. Thank you. Yeah. Magic's largest power, toughness, granting aura. So I have a small story about this one. Okay. So when they released Theros Beyond Death, uh, I was really excited about a red creature. It is uh, called Storm Herald for two and a red. It's a 3-2 human shaman with haste. It says when Storm Herald enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. Exile those auras at the beginning of the next end step. If those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. So a lot of people are trying to break this card in modern by using Eldrazi Conscriptions, which is a, a aura that gives plus 10, plus 10, and Annihilator 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this aura, since it has the highest addition of power and toughness, actually more than plus 10, plus 10. So uh, I may or may not have picked up a few copies of Storm Herald in speculation for this card being printed. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I, I'll be disappointed if they actually print it in a commander so that it's not modern playable, but or Pioneer playable, honestly, because Eldrazi Conscriptions is not available in Pioneer. So this could be something that could put, you know, that creature at least make him playable in Standard, in Pioneer, and Modern. We'll see. I'm all about it. Um, let's see. Third and fourth card with zero is even. So it's an X card where X well, is even. Third, well, I mean, the, the first thing that I thought of this was the um, Eldrazi, where you can't... Void Winnower. I guess it yeah, could be like Void Winnower. I mean, oh, it's got to be. It wouldn't be an X spell. It would probably be something that cares about other spells being played. What if they, yeah. what if they did another gotcha and Ikoria has Eldrazi and they just reprint Void Winnower? Um, well, I don't, I don't think so. Cause this is third and fourth card with zero is even. Oh, true. So they're new printings. Yeah. Um, you did skip over a card with the text. Oh, X is the times this creature has mutated until we know what mutated is. This one's hard to chat about, right? I mean, it is all we could do is speculate. It's gotta be like evolve. I want it to be so much like evolve, but then you gain a creature type or something. Every time this creature does X, you change its creature type or a lot of, a lot of people are predicting like uh skipping down to the 12 different um or 13 different types of counters that it's actually going to be keyword counters so you put a trample counter on this creature and as long as he has a trample counter he has trample yeah i'm not mad about that i like a no, flying give cool. me a flying counter give me all the flying counters proliferate my trample counters do you think it's going to give double trample? No. No, I don't. <laughs> but you can have double flying. I fly I, I, higher than the other flyers. Well, I'm assuming that maybe this other card that says uh, choose a kind of counter at random, maybe it'll say and then put a counter on all creatures you control of that kind of counter or something like that. Sure. It's a way to give all your guys all the things. So four shadow counters. Are four shadow counters just suspend counters? I don't know why they specifically chose the number four for the number of shadow counters. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Put eight, four shadow mm. counters. Yeah. So uh, I think you said it before uh, we started streaming that this is maybe is a suspend like. Kind of like suspend, but we're just foreshadowing that this creature is coming. Yeah. I-, I wonder if removing four shadow counters from it actually do something. But- so more like a, a saga would be right now where the counters count up and it does different things as it goes. But foreshadowing as the counters come down and maybe it only has one static effect every time a foreshadow counter is removed from it, it does something to what, removable. What other counters could we have? Okay, so there's 13 and we know one of them is loyalty and we know one of them is foreshadow counters. So we know what two of the counters are. Plus one, plus one. Okay. Minus one, minus one. You think they're going to bring back minus one, minus one in a plus one, plus one set as well? I guess they could. I mean, I'm just trying to think of what, obvious. Things. What new counters could we have, though? Uh, there's going to be, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to go lore counters. What if we not... had like, what if we had color counters? Put a color counter on it and you Ooh. choose a color when you put it on it and that creature is that color. That would be kind of cool. 
I that'd be great it. for the, the the cards that change colors. It's another way to do it. Yeah, another way to hack. Another way to hack, like Glamour Die, or uh, there's there's like four or five cards. I know the Momir Vig deck in Commander plays with color hacking. Yep, that's really yep. cool. Um, yeah, I think a color counter would be cool, like flying or a trample counter. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I, I can't. I mean, it's literally the most open-ended thing in the world because wizards could do whatever they want with the counters. What about infect? Are they going to bring it back? Infect counters? I guess it's possible. People like it, but we're assuming, based on the story. Spoiler alert that came out a long time ago that Ashiok learns about the Phyrexian. So I assume when the Phyrexian comes back, we'll see more infect. Probably. But so I there's would, no guarantee that this is going to be an Ashiok plane. N- no, I'm not saying this. No, I'm not saying this one is. I'm right. I'm assuming this one's not. I assume next year oh, we find gosh. out about the story with Ashiok going to see the, the Phyrexians, which care mm-hmm. about minus counters so we, and infect and grossness. We do know Vivian is printed in this. Uh, everyone kind of knew this was going to be a creature-based set. Did they actually so. confirm Vivian's in it, or do we just think that that's artwork of Vivian? Vivi- Vivian's on the artwork for the booster box. I just wasn't sure if that was her, if that was confirmed. It definitely looks like her. Vivian does have a twin sister, but she did. She does? I didn't hear that story. I'm not caught up on anything about Vivian. I know nothing about her. It was in the um, Core 19 story when they talked about the origin of all the Elder Dragon. Interesting. I have no idea. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was the first printing of Vivian. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember that. She got a couple cards. Uh, I think she has three now because she was one of the Planeswalker deck cards, but I, I'm happy to see a new Planeswalker. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought she was cool. So a card that says choose a kind of counter at random. We kind of mentioned that. Uh, we mentioned the foreshadow counters. A cycle that, that they've been asked to make for over 10 years. So I was going over the Reddit post and someone had something on Like everyone... everyone knows that this is the cycle that they're going to print or whatever. Um, I'm trying to find it. Sorry. Is it is it finishing the cycle of cycle lands? No. Because um, he, he never mentioned finishing a cycle. So it's like a cycle that they just have never made before. They've just been asking for it for 10 years. Okay. <clears throat> um, some people are assuming... Uh, finishing the future site dual lands. Ooh, I wouldn't be mad about that. The weird ones. I run, I run Grove of the Burn Willows, the green red one that has tap. When you you tap it for red or green, and when you tap it, your opponents each gain one life. They, those were weird lands from from future site. There's one that says like if you played a land this turn, or if you played an island, it taps for a swamp. If you played a swamp, it taps for an island. Something like that. Yeah, huh. that's kind of weird. Um, they, so a lot of people have been saying the ultimatums, finishing or doing the cycle of ultimatums. And actually, I'm not really sure. I'm going to learn about ultimatums right now. Well, those all, I mean, there's cruel ultimatum. There's a few of them. Right. So that's, there's a violent ultimatum, clarion ultimatum. Brilliant ultimatum, cruel ultimatum. Are those three colors? Those are three colors, right? Yeah, they're all three colors. So they want the yeah. other three colors? Do you think they're really going to return? I mean, these were, what, Shards of Alara printings? Yeah. Those are those are shard colors, so they'd have to be in wedge colors then. Yeah, and, you know, have you finished uh, reading Forsaken yet, Andy? No, so no spoilers. Okay. okay. <laughs> Well, I guess where that that's where that conversation ends right there. Mm, okay. Um no, I'm I, I'm interested to see what I guess what that is. They they had they finished the fast lands in Kaladesh. Yeah. yeah. But there's cycle lands, but for over ten years, I wonder what Yeah, it's interesting. It's I guess we'll see what it is. And then some it's new, I've done. And then some new creature types. So yes. well I guess not yeah. new. They're not all new. Well, None of them are actually... Well, is Brushwag new? Otter's um, new. Otter is new. Brush, Brushwag is not new, okay. but it's been a while. But Otter's not, and we get a standard squirrel. That's right. 
So, and it's a nightmare squirrel. <laughs> nightmare squirrel. Squirrels someone, are just nightmares in general, right? I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody did ask, like, oh, Morrow's getting us. He's just printing a changeling. One changeling. Oh. No. Nope. He confirmed it is not a changeling. These are all real creature types in the set. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Well, we will find out in just about, well, actually two weeks from today, preview yep. start, two weeks from today, um, but we'll be recording on the first since we record on Wednesdays, so you won't hear us talk about previews until the 8th, except on Twitter when we retweet all of them because we're going to yeah. want all of them. <laughs> Wait, so impatient, at least I am. So impatient. All right. So now that we've been stuck from home, stuck at home for, I think this is day six for me. It's been since last I've, Saturday, Friday. I've, actually, I've been going to work every day, so I haven't really been stuck at home, but I'm not going out outside of work. Yeah. Yeah. I think the last time I saw a friend uh, was the 13th, because you came over on the 13th and we drafted Mystery Booster. And then we were all like, okay, we got to take this seriously. And so Saturday morning, we said, well, I said, I'm just going to stay at home. So yeah. I haven't seen anyone in person, but I had an extra camera. And people were kind of talking a little bit about streaming Paper Commander. And so um, I was very, um, I got an invite from um, Austin from Commander 99, uh, Mana Curves, uh, Mr. Bevers on, on Twitter. They said, hey, we need a fourth person. Do you want to stream? Mana Curves is going to be streaming tonight. So I said, yeah, I, I, well, I guess it was tomorrow when, the, when they asked me. And I was free. And that was on Sunday, this past Sunday. So it was my first time playing with someone other than an immediate group of friends. And so we were going to talk about streaming paper magic and like what it really took to set up and the cost. It's actually not all that expensive and you no. definitely don't need the setup that we have. Like we have, like all you really need is the webcam. Like sure we have microphones that are nicer that we're using, but you can use the microphone that comes on the webcam. It, it works fine. Um, so, uh, Coyle, what, what webcam do you have? We have the same webcam, right? Yeah, HD 1080p Logitech C9700, I think. C okay, I have the C922, and then I have the C920. I actually have two because I didn't want to set up. Yeah, C920. That's the one I got. C920, okay. I have the C920. That's what I streamed with when I played with Mana Curves, with Chase. and um, But I have the C922 that I use when we stream every Wednesday. And so... Uh, all we had to do was buy a microphone arm to hold your webcam above your playmat. But that's not, you don't have to do that. So I did that because it was $15.99. Actually, I think it was $20 because I couldn't order it online. I actually had to go into uh, a store that mm -hmm. was just not far from us, but it's crazy right now. Don't go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> you can go, you can get every single thing that we have for our setup. You can get at Best Buy, except the, the arm. You'd have to go to a store that specializes in like microphones and stuff. Right. Um, you're not going to find that at Best Buy, but so you hook that like just, just to your desk and then you set your microphone it, like screws right into the end of the arm and you just move that above the play space and tilt the camera down. Um, I've actually I've actually seen some really budget uh, setups that yeah. some people have. Yeah, so you can use, you can use your phone to stream. Um, Discord is 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 supported on the phone very good, very well. Uh, and I seen someone build like a cardboard box. I was going to talk like, about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so literally for a cardboard box and the cell phone that you probably already have, you could do paper streaming. Yeah, so they cut a hole in the top of the box and set their phone so the camera faces down. And then you need light. So they cut a hole in the side of the box and they had like a lamp sitting next to it to shine light in the box. Mm -hmm. And then they just put their playmat inside the box. And you just hook your webcam right to your computer. Which, and, and honestly, if the quality's not perfect, you're fine because you can generally tell the picture. And if not, you just ask someone, what's that thing you have just sitting right there? Because right. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, and, and even more, if you don't even have a webcam, again, using your phone, uh, you use the camera on the opposite side of your phone so that you can still see the screen. 
of the other people's uh, play mats. So you literally, you, you might have to do some gymnastics to like see what your screen is and then go under your box and then play your cards. But um, yeah, I've seen it work for a lot of people. And then, yeah, you just have to make sure you have some some light. Um, I yeah. I have test a. Your, what was that? Yeah, so t you got to test your setup. Make sure you don't just go into it and be like, I don't know if you're playing mono black or if your screen is black, but I can't see anything that you're playing. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that doesn't happen. So I have a ring light. If anyone um, wants to know, I can post a link to the light that I have. It's not necessary um, to, to use for this, but I, I turn it on. Um, there is a video by... Um, who was that video by Coil that I sent to you? That was, was it playing with power or the spike feeders? Spike feeders. Spike feeders had done a video on their setup. Um, so they have a different set of like, um, they're just uh, square lights that they bought in like a pack of two. Um, you can just order them right on Amazon. And they, they suggest, they said that your lighting should be low and to the side and not high and above. Because if it's high and above, you're going to have a lot of glare on your cards, which is 100% true. When I first turned it on, I go, no one will ever be able to see what these cards are <laughs> because uh, there is way too much glare. Yeah. Um, so I have a ring light, but your regular overhead light or putting a lamp next to you, like low on a short table or something next to you works. Um, and then streaming, or, or I guess streaming, you don't have to stream it up, um, but connecting with people. There's a, there's a couple different programs that you can use. We did yep. it through Discord when we played, but you can do it through Skype. Um, today, people online were talking about Zoom meetings. If you have that Zoom, I don't know if it's free. There were people talking about um, not having that as a free option and, and perhaps having um, like less capabilities if you don't have like the paid version of Zoom, but Discord's free. And that's actually how we're recording this call right now is we're doing this through Discord as well. It works yep. really well. Um, and we, if you do stream, you can just use like OBS Streamlabs and you just capture your screen from Discord. And that's how we streamed it on, did we do that? What night was that? Saturday? Or yeah. We did it on Saturday night. We, when streamed, we streamed with Chris. With Chris, yeah. So we streamed... Um, some magic there. Pro tip in your settings on um, Discord, <laughs> there is something that you should turn off so it doesn't use as much of your CPU because you drop a lot of frames. Um, so I was given that advice. Um, so if you have any questions about setting up Discord for this, it's very easy. And if you want to play any games with us, let us know. We can schedule those in advance. Yeah. Um, um. So there's also a, a Discord channel that I would recommend. Uh, I haven't done a ton of games with them, but I've heard a lot of good feedback. Uh, it's the Play EDH Discord. Uh, mm -hmm. They even have their own subreddit, um, reddit.com slash r slash play EDH. Uh, it's a, a pretty good community. Um, they have a few different categories of uh, what level of deck you want to use from uh, casual, moderate, high power, and even competitive if you're looking to, to jam some competitive games. I was looking to use this group uh, to play some competitive just because there isn't a big competitive scene, uh, particularly in, in our area with LGSs. So I was uh, already getting familiar with the play group as is. And now that we're quarantined, even more chance. It's becoming very popular. Uh, I see online right now there's there's over 50 players on it. So there's there's always uh, always people looking for a pod. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, playing playing magic uh, while you're stuck at home is possible. People were wondering how they were going to play, and we when we first were thinking about what we wanted to do for this episode last week, we've been talking about this. And we said playing magic at home, and we were like, what can we say? It's you have arena, MTGO, and paper magic that you stream. And now you can this setup will work for any game, right? If you have if you just want to play with one other person, you can stream playing standard pioneer modern legacy you know what it's just 1v1 i mean you can do yep. that as well so um very easy to set up you the the software for the webcam is is plug it into your computer and that's it Done. There's, there's no other work there are some if you there are some instances when you would have to flip your screen upside down with the program um but uh my understanding is that it's pretty easy like click of a button to flip it or mirror it um 
So yeah, so that's how we set up for Paper Commander. And we're looking to start streaming Paper Commander as well, since that's what our channel focuses on primarily, although we've been streaming uh, Brawl, which is our standard um, standard commander, essentially. Mm-hmm. We'd like to do some more of this, so we're going to try to figure out a night that that we can do that. Now that everyone's stuck at home... It might be more than one night. <laughs> it might be more than one night for a little while. <laughs> yeah, so... You want to do a, a pack one, pick one? Um, yeah. Can I just like go on over to your house real quick? I mean, you could. You could. Let's open. It. Okay, so yeah, we're doing. We're doing. Awesome. We're, anything is possible. Magic Origins. So we've got the Sparking Planeswalkers, the original Spark for um, Gideon and Liliana, um, Nissa, Jace, and Chandra. Jace runs Prodigy. So I guess <laughs> probably probably the money card in Origins, I assume, is Jace Rins Prodigy. Yeah. I'd be JVP. happy to flip any of the, the Planeswalkers. Yeah, so I think JVP is number one and Liliana is number two, just in terms of price. But Liliana is number one in my heart, so let's make it happen. <laughs> and I played the Gideon that's actually named Kithian in here. I played that in Standard. So I have a lot of experience with that with that card. Let's open this and see what we got. We're gonna we're gonna do a pack one, pick pack, one, pack, pack one, one, pick one, one draft. draft. Yeah, let's do. Or, oh, let's do pack one, pick one. Commander, the card we'd pick yeah. that you're gonna put into a commander deck this week. Okay, so the first card is Touch of Moon Glove. Um, one black instant target creature you control gets plus one plus zero oh, and gains Death Touch till end of turn. Whenever a creature dealt damage by that creature dies, its controller loses two life. Subterranean Scout is a 2-1 creature uh, for one and a red that says when it enters the battlefield, target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. Okay. A Crowan Jailer, a 1-1 for one white that has pay three, two and a white, and tap it to tap target creature. This is actually pretty good in like a draft format. Yeah. This reminds yeah. me... It w- you have the ability to tap something big down. It does cost three, but that's a really good ability to have. They have one big thing that you can't get around. Dark dabbling. I'm just going to dabble a little bit dark. Mm, I love it. Two and a black for regenerate target creature and draw a card. It's an instant spell. With spell mastery, if there's two or more instant or sorceries in your graveyard, you regenerate each other creature you control. Mm. That's pretty fun. Uh, Screeching Scab, one and a blue for a 2-1 that has, uh, when this enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Okay. Zombie. Since we're looking at this for commander, it's a creature type that, that's relevant. Vastwood Gorger, a 5-6 worm for 5 and a green. That's it. 5-6 worm for 5 and a green. Vanilla. It has a lot of flavor text. Ooh. But it's not anything. <laughs> I throw it in Flavor Text Tribal. Flavor Text Tribal, that's true. Nantuko Husk. This is a good card. Um, a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a black for a zombie insect that says sacrifice another creature gets plus 2, plus 2 till end of turn. Sacrifice. Sack Outlet. That's very good. Yep. Bellows Lizard for a 1-1 one, one for 1 red that has pay 1 and a red to basically give it fire breathing. So it gets plus 1, plus 0 till end of turn. Okay. Leaf Gilder. A 2-1... Elf Druid for one and a green that taps to add green. So a mana dork that costs two. Not bad. Toppin Free Blade. So it is a 2 2 human soldier for one and a white that has vigilance and renown one. When this creature deals damage to a player, if it isn't renowned, put a 1 1 counter on it. It becomes renowned. This was really good, I remember, in draft because it would become a 3 3 with vigilance if they had no creatures on turn two. Gotcha. Well, I guess it doesn't have haste, but on turn three. Right. All right, our first uncommon, Blazing Hellhound, is a 4-3 elemental hound for two black and a red that, that says pay one, sacrifice another creature, it deals one damage to target creature or player. So, okay. it's, again, another sack outlet. Yeah. Elemental is relevant, but it's red-black, so it can't go in, like, Omnath, because it's got black. It can't go into any Omnath deck. Um, Knightly Valor is an aura for four and a white that says enchant creature. The creature, uh, when Knightly Valor enters the battlefield, create a two, two white knight with vigilance and the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two and has vigilance. 
uh, Ram Roller is a 2 3 for 3 three generic that says Ram Roller attacks each turn if able. It gets plus 2 plus 0 oh, as long as you control another artifact, so it would be a 4 3 that attacks each turn. It's a juggernaut ish. I'm really excited about this pack. <gasps> Why? Because we got the Flip Gideon Planeswalker. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I wanted. <laughs> this is the one I wanted to open. Kithian Hero of Akros. So it's a 2 1 for 1 that has at the, at, at the end of combat, if Kithian Hero of Akros and at least two other creatures attacked this combat, exile it and return it to the battlefield transformed. So they're sparking it's to show their spark this was really really cool when this first came out i mean it's still really really cool uh and kithian also has pay two and a white and it gets indestructible till end of turn so you can swing and still keep it alive even though you know like another creature is going to die yep and it flips into gideon battle forged uh three loyalty that says plus two up to one target creature and opponent controls attacks gideon battle forged during its next turn so you're forcing something to attack uh, plus one until your next turn target creature gains indestructible and you untap that creature. And then for zero, Gideon Battleforge becomes a four for a human soldier with indestructible that's still a planeswalker, prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. That's actually the one Gideon I do not play in Dejiro. Oops, all Gideon tribal. <laughs> Except, oops, <laughs> almost all Gideon tribal. The only reason I don't is because you can't fetch for him with Dejiro's trigger because he's not a planeswalker yet. That's true. I've seen somebody play. I've seen somebody play Kithian Hero of Akros as their commander. That would be interesting. I mean, a two-one. I mean, it's not the best Planeswalker. I'll give you that. It's really not. This was really cool in Standard, though, when you could have Gideon on one side and Kithian on the other. Mm -hmm. And then when this Gideon dies, you just flip the other one back into the same Gideon. It's like they know it's coming. Foreshadow counters. No. How many four shadow counters? How many four? Four, four shadow, shadow counters. Four shadow counters. Gotcha. We got the uh, checklist card for the Planeswalker. Convenient. Yeah. I don't remember if it came in the pack. Like if you got the Planeswalker, I don't. I don't think it was stacked like that. But I could be wrong. And then um, we got the um, elemental token that the flip Nissa makes. Ashaya the Woken World. The, awo nice. the Awoken World. This was a really good pack, actually. So, so what's, your, what's your commander pick and what deck are you putting it in? Um, for commander, I'm, I'm picking Kithian. And, and what deck are you putting it in? If I put this in a deck, I have... <laughs> uh, you know what I would put this in? I would put this in my Sagarda Humans deck because it's a human. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. So Sagarda gives my humans uh, hexproof. Gives me and my humans hexproof, and I play a bunch of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The card, the cards that give my creatures plus one plus one. Anthems. Um, I play anthems. Um, yeah. So, so like all humans you control gets plus one plus one, or white creatures you control get plus one plus one. So I would play Kithian Hero of Akros in my Sagrado Humans deck. Um. I would pick that red creature that happened that was towards the beginning of the pack that makes it so a creature can't block. Mm -hmm. The subterranean scout. Yeah, is it a goblin? Oh my god, it's perfect. It's a goblin so, scout. I picked it without knowing it's a goblin, but I'm putting it in my Pin Street Kingpin deck. Yeah. <laughs> I can't block my Cranko as I am forced to swing to make him work. Sure. Sure. Um. Well, that was a really good pack. Thank you, Cube Draft, for that pack. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll post all of these online, and I bet you a bunch of people are gonna take Kithy and pack one, pick one. <laughs> <laughs> that or Topin Freeblade. I wonder what they would pick. I'm interested to Probably see. Probably Kithy. It makes sense. You get a mythic. It's, it's splashy. It does the things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. You want to do com Commander of the Week? I would love to do Commander of the Week. This week. I'm talking about a deck that I made a very long time ago, uh, a very aggressive deck. Um, I call this deck Aluminum Road Leader. Uh, it is Cranko Tin Street Kingpin. <laughs> Aluminum Road Leader. That's right. Um, so what this deck aims to do, uh, it's, it's very Voltron-esque. Um, it's definitely built around the commander itself, uh, but it definitely has the ability to kill someone just with commander damage. 
So Cranko Tin Street Kingpin uh, is a 1-2 legendary creature goblin. So for 2 and a red, uh, whenever Cranko Tin Street Kingpin attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, then create a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to Cranko's power. Um, so this deck actually has a few different themes. It's not uh, super focused into one thing, allowing you to um, uh, have a, a few different strategies uh, you can do depending on if people put up pillow fort cards like ghostly prison uh, allowing you not to attack with a swarm uh, one, one of the one of the strategies is to attack with a swarm of goblins uh, one of the strategies is to kill people with pings and then the other strategy would be to uh, kill someone with commander damage with cranko so first strategy commander damage with cranko uh, we are going to have a ton of um, Goblin Lords that we can play in this deck uh, that pump your uh, Goblins, such as Goblin King. All Goblins in play gain Mountain Walk and plus one, plus one, uh, while Goblin King is in play for one, a red, and a red. Um, on top of that, we're going to have some Equipments and Auras that synergize well with the fact that Cranko makes more Goblins. We're going to play with equipments such as Sigil of Valor. Uh, for two generic, whenever equipped creature attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other creature you control. And it equips for one. Uh, and Pen and Blade, uh, generic, three generic, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control, uh, equipped for four. Um, so this just makes Cranko stronger even when his ability uh, triggers and goes on the stack. Um, so that's fantastic because then you'll end up making more goblins. Um, some other effects. Uh, th this deck does aim to create a lot of mana uh, using cards such as Battle Him for one and a red. Add red to your mana pool for each creature you control. And Brightstone Ritual uh, for one red. Add red to your mana pool for each goblin in play. Allowing you to cast some of these larger spells um, such as uh, Eldrazi Conscriptions. It's an aura that gives, it, it costs eight generic, enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus 10, plus 10, has trample and annihilator two. Uh, kind of a pet card that some people don't just see coming um, in the, the Cranko deck. Um, but I also have uh, two fire breathing effect enchantments. Uh, fire breathing would be you pay a red to give a creature plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Um, so if you can use a Brightstone Ritual or a Battle him at instant speed while you have uh, Fire Breathing on Cranko, or you use Gitu Fire Breathing, which actually has Flash, um, you can really get someone good out of nowhere with all that mana. Um, another one of these pump spells, um, Betrothed of Fire. Uh, it's a one and a red that says sacrifice an untapped creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn or sacrifice the enchanted creature, and all creatures you control get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So this card is actually two foes. You can put it on your Cranko and then swing into someone and sacrifice all the one ones that you have, all of your goblins, to power him up, make him big. Or if someone goes to target Cranko, you can sacrifice Cranko himself and pump up all your one ones and swing in with your one ones, um, which are now going to be three ones, uh, and really get there that way. Um, some of the cards that you're going to want to play are uh, cards like Strionic Resonator. Uh, it is a two generic uh, artifact. You pay two, tap it, uh, copy target triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So when uh, Krenko's triggered ability goes on the stack, you can activate Strionic Resonator so that he gets, he's going to end up getting two plus one plus one counters and then goblins twice. Um, so that's a, a very key card uh, in the deck. Uh, as well as key to the city. So one thing that red uh, doesn't do well with is card draw. Um, and you a lot of times you'll have to uh, loot um, or or uh, what's the other not loot, but when rummage, you have to rummage. First and draw. Uh, yeah, rummage. So key to the city uh, for two generic, it's an artifact it says tap it, discard a card. Up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. Whenever Key to the City becomes untapped, you may pay two generic, and if you do, draw a card. So not only does this allow uh, Cranko to um, be unblockable, but it also gives you additional card draw um, at your upkeep, when you're, or at your untap, 
uh, when you untap it. And um, that's really vital in a, uh, a red deck. Uh, some of the huge payoff goblins that we play in here are uh, Goblin Sledder and Maw Grader. Uh, they're both Goblin 1-1s one that cost one red, and each of them has uh, exactly the same effect. Sacrifice a Goblin, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, so this is a way where you can uh, pump Cranko at instant speed, and even though you're sacrificing one Goblin to get plus one, plus one when he attacks in, he's going to make that Goblin back. So uh, it's really not that big a deal. In fact, it's really, really good. Um, we also play effects uh, that help that sacrifice actually get there. Sorry, just kind of reorganizing real quick. Um, cards like Bogart Shenanigans. Whenever another goblin you control is put into a graveyard from play, you may have Bogart Shenanigans deal one damage to target player. Uh, that's for two and a red. And then um, another uh, two goblins that we're going to play are Skirk Prospector, which is also for one red. Sacrifice a goblin, add red. We are very aggressive on lands in this deck, so we do need ramp. We play a lot of uh, a heavy artifact ramp package as well. Uh, you'll see that in the list. I won't go over all that. Um, some people might say, why play Cranko Tin Street Kingpin when you can play Cranko Mob Boss? We're going to play Cranko Mob Boss in the 99 because he really is that good. Um, he is two, a red, and a red for a 3-3 Goblin Warrior that says tap him. Put X-1-1 one, one red Goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is the number of Goblins you control. Uh, finally, to finish it off, we have our alternate uh, win conditions. Not, not truly alternate win conditions. We're still uh, killing people with their life totals. Um, but ways that we can get around... Uh, some stacks pieces people might be playing or, or pillow fort pieces people might be playing. Uh, first, we have Impact Tremors and Perforos, God of the Forge. Um, both of these are enchantments uh, that say whenever creatures enter the battlefield under your control, you're going to deal damage to um, each opponent. Impact Tremors is one in a red, and it'll deal one damage to each opponent. Perforos is three in a red and do two damage to each opponent. So whenever you create your goblins, you're going to um, do a bunch of damage to your opponents. We have Cavalcade of Calamity and Hellrider. Cavalcade? Uh, Cavalcade <laughs> of, of Calamity and Hellrider. Um, both of these uh, cards allow it so that when your creatures attack, they deal damage before the, the damage of their attack actually goes through. So Hellrider is for two, a red, and a red, and it is a creature. Cavalcade of Calamity is for one and a red, and it's an enchantment. Uh, and they both say whenever a creature you control attacks, it deals one damage uh, to the defending player. Um, Cavalcade also says to the Planeswalker, um, I believe that is um, just uh, needs updated text for Hellrider, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, we have Voracious Dragon, which is a three red red uh, dragon um, flying 4 4 that has Devour 1. So as this enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This creature enters the battlefield with that many plus one plus one counters on it. When Voracious Dragon enters the battlefield, it deals damage to target creature or player equal to twice the number of goblins it devoured. So, nom nom. Eat up, eat up 20 goblins, do 40 damage to someone's face. Uh, a very similar effect to Burn at the Stake, two red, red, red sorcery. As an additional cost to cast Burn at the Stake, tap any number of untapped creatures you control. Burn at the Stake deals damage to target creature or player equal to three times the number of creatures tapped this way. And finally, the one thing that a goblin deck does best is make dragons. So we're playing a sorcery called Descent of the Dragons for four red red. It says destroy any number of target creatures. For each creature destroyed this way, its controller puts a 4-4 four, four red dragon creature token with flying on the battlefield. So this just goes off if you have, if you make 20 goblins and you have a Perforos out and it does 40 damage to everyone, you cast Descent of the Dragons, sacrifice all... 20 of your goblins to make 20 more dragons. They all enter, seize Perforos again, does another 40 damage. Uh, it's a way to get around without having to swing. So um, if you want to check out the whole deck lists, uh, we will post it on the Twitters. And you can uh, give me any advice to improve. Um, I have had this deck for a while. I have tuned it quite a bit. The, the land base does seem aggressive, but uh, since Cranko only costs three mana and I have a of rocks and ramp, it does seem to work pretty well. Nice.
Yeah, that deck is very good. Ryan has been trying to make you laugh for like literally 20 I, minutes. I've been looking at the <laughs> My neck hurts. Uh, we, we have some photos. Ryan took some snapshots of, of us recording because we're using our, our cameras as well. So we'll post that online. Um, Hopefully he took photos of himself too. Mm-hmm. You got to take some creepy photos now? <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you all for listening. If you want to contact us, you can find us um, on Twitter at Guardian Pod. You can find me at AT Flory. You can find me at Worm Coil Engine. Also, take a look for hashtag Guardian Project Pod to find our posts and episodes. We'd like to hear from you, so send those, send along your comments and anything you want us to talk about on the next episode, and we'll go over those. Uh, you can also email us at Guardian Project Pod at gmail.com. We will see you all next week and maybe we'll do a live stream soon actually next week we're going to have um uh zuby from magic with zuby on the episode so stay tuned yeah. for that we're really excited about that but we're probably going to be using um discord to record until it's okay to go back out again so <laughs> this is what your audio is going to sound like we hope it's great <laughs> <laughs> uh, me too <laughs> <laughs> Be um, are we done? We're Wait, done now. We're bye. officially done. Okay. I didn't know if you said bye yet. We oh. did not say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs> you can cut some of that crap out. None of it. Okay, no, that yeah, was you can stop recording. <laughs>